Hey everybody, this is Eroica. Thanks so much for stopping by for another video. So if you logged in today, you've probably seen the myriad of changes that came along with the update. And one of those is going to be the introduction of yet another hero. This is Leonidas. He comes to us as a magical beast tank, and I just unlocked him a little while ago. I'm really excited about this guy. I love the way he looks. I love the whole idea of him. Let's go ahead and go through his profile character sheet and find out what he has to offer. So let's take a look at this guy's graphic for starters, because I have to tell you, I, you know me and how much I can't stand the copy, paste, and change the color, and we're going to call it a new hero. This guy is actually something new and refreshing. He's this cool lion, got a fierce look to him, some nice wings, and some cool-looking battle armor. This guy is ready to do some damage. I like it. It's very creative. It's something new, at least, and it's, it's at least a little different from what we're used to seeing. Good job. I'm looking forward to this. This is awesome. So in order to unlock Leonidas, you'll have to complete the campaign in normal mode and then come back and start working on the dungeons in challenge mode. Challenge mode is an increased difficulty level for the campaign. And then within the, all of the dungeons, which you would have run before, you'll now have access to the token for Leonidas, as you can see here in the Plague Land. He's available, and then his token will come along with uh, Cobalt the Pestilent in this particular dungeon. Now... I can tell you this to save you some time. Even if you three-star a particular dungeon that happens to carry his token, if you go back and you try to quick loot it again, even in refreshing, you will not get the Leonidas token updating along with that. It is only a one-time deal. You do not have to three-star it to unlock his token. Uh, that's only if you're going to go back and quick loot and try to get the primary hero's token from within that dungeon. But as long as you complete the dungeon in some fashion or another um, and the the chest drops, then his token will come out of it one time, and then that's it. You can't get it from that particular dungeon again, thus keeping you in a forward motion uh, for this campaign mode in the challenge difficulty level. All right, let's take a look at his stats tab, and per the usual, we'll go down and look at his numerical statistics, and as usual, you should pause, and in theory, you should pause because you should see something a little bit interesting. This guy is a pretty powerful character, but as with all power, there has to be some counterbalance to it. And what I see here is his 0% resistance to fire, poison, cold, disease, and freeze, and very little resistance against spirit attacks. So he's a pretty powerful guy, comes with a pretty neat set of tools, but there's got to be something, right? And this is it, which means he's going to take the full brunt of attacks that come with those elements or those afflictions. So keep that in mind uh, when you put him in your... PvP setup, or you're going to run with a dungeon with him, just keep that in mind. So, he is a light uh, hero, and so therefore he has a 30% advantage over dark units, and I'm going to pause there, because there's a trait that relates back to that. So, the first trait that he has is magical, which means he takes less damage from non-physical attacks. We're familiar with that one. The next one is flying in the face, and honestly, I can't quite figure this out. I played around with it, and I couldn't really see what it did. The, so I'm just going off of the text definition here. Is that either now, and I'm unaware of it, or future, and they haven't designed it yet, there's going to be a hero that has some type of ability uh, where once he is attacked, he will immediately retaliate back again. And I'm assuming that perhaps this trait will negate that from happening. But if you have true knowledge about it please by all means put that in the comments below so we can all learn something new here and so here's the trait that goes back to what i was talking about before this is the avatar of light and light allies are immune to dark elemental bonuses so where dark enemies and light enemies usually are balanced together they each have an advantage over one another uh in this particular case with this guy in your group he will negate that from happening so your team will still get the light bonus against dark heroes but they will not receive any back again so that's really neat this next one is called secret to eternal life and upon his being destroyed in the game uh, he will bring one of your other previously deceased allies back to life again so this only works one way he has to die after somebody else has died in order for this to work i tested this out and i wanted to see if maybe it was sort of an allowance that was banked up at the beginning of the dungeon but it's not somebody in your team has to die first and then when uh, Leonidas dies, that other team member will come back uh, to life again. And if there's more than one, it's a random which one gets picked. So keep that in mind. 
And the last one is Judgment Day. When dealing a death blow, the corpse is burned and cannot be resurrected. So in a PvP setup, once you've uh, destroyed somebody with Leonidas, as long as he's the one dealing the death blow, then he would not be able to be resurrected. And I'm starting to see uh, Emily in more PvP setups now, and uh, they're sort of a stall uh, tactic type of design, and so you were usually need to focus on her first, but for some reason you happen to kill someone off early, she can bring him back. This would negate that from happening, again, as long as Leonidas was the one who dealt the death blow. Uh, then they would not be able to do it. Any other character, then any resurrections in play will still happen. When we take a look at his abilities tab, we of course have the basic attack. Additionally, we also have the attack called Sun Worship. This is a ranged spirit attack on all enemies for, at this level, 784 base damage. Um, and it has a chance to add the Magnified Light debuff. Now, first off, this is probably the coolest attack I've seen in this game. Probably even rivals some of Zom's attack, which I love the little brain-eating one. But this one has sort of a um, Indiana Jones t uh, Temple of Doom, or excuse me, uh, Ark of the Covenant one, uh, where the Staff of Ra and the light comes down on the floor, shows them on the map where to go. This is the same thing. Uh, goes around and uh, burns pretty much anything that's on the floor. It's pretty cool. I like it, and uh, it's neat. But anyway, the, uh, mag the Magnified Light debuff basically um, adds even, even more uh, damage from lighted enemies against that particular target so that's always a good thing to have pretty cool I, I love this one it's pretty awesome the next one is going to be his taunt which is the guardian forces enemies to target single attacks on him um, and all of the allies gain a 40 percent 44 percent reduction in magic attacks and this is a taunt that starts powered, which I'm a big fan of. So it means you can use it right off the bat as soon as you walk into the dungeon uh, and five turns pretty average for uh, tank taunts that's right on target and his last attack is going to be Divine Inspiration, which heals himself and then also gives him an attack and defense buff by 100%. So that's pretty amazing. He's While this is on, he's going to be pretty indestructible. So keep that in mind. Uh, pretty cool thing to have uh, for him, especially if he's going to be taunting. Uh, but, you know, obviously you're going to save this for when he needs to be healed. He heals himself, and then he's going to be up to full, and then he'll be uh, have an attack buff, and then of course a defense buff, which is what you would want your tank to have. So that's really awesome. Leonidas' ascension requirements are pretty standardized. The first ascension requires 28 light evo larvae, 15 light evos, 12 dark evo larvae, and 2 subterranean evos. This will give you his taunt, or his second ability. It'll also get you the avatar of light, which prevents other light heroes from being subjected to dark attack bonuses. And it'll also get you the secret to eternal life, which will bring back one of your characters if they've died after Leonidas' has been killed. His second ascension requirements are 25 Water Evos, 15 Dark Evo Monarchs, 8 Mind's Eye Evos, and 2 Shadow Evos. This will give you his Divine Inspiration ability, which is his self-heal and buff. It will also give you the Judgment Day trait, which is prevents resurrection if he deals the killing blow to any of the enemies. Overall, Leonidas is a welcome addition to the Dungeon Boss game, and I'm really glad that he's here. He does bring a fresh perspective and some new viability to using some of your light characters, especially in dungeons where they're predominantly inhabited by dark heroes, because he can prevent them from being subjected to the dark damage bonus. And that brings one question to mind. Light heroes definitely have a distinct advantage right now, and there's really nothing to counteract that on the dark hero side of it. So it makes you wonder if sometime down the road they're going to be adding a hero or some other element to the game that's going to bring things back into balance but right now with Leonidas I think this definitely tips the scale in their favor. From a PvP perspective Leonidas does have the ability to prevent resurrection on the opposing team. Now how viable this is remains to be seen but you figure that the average resurrection can only generally happen one time during a battle so if it prevents that from happening I think that's pretty good. Additionally when you consider the fact that he's able to resurrect one of your characters upon his death that's just another way for you to stay in the game and that might be just the edge you need to be able to win that particular battle. From a PvE perspective, I think he's going to be very useful and more than likely will dominate. His taunt offers all allies, not just light allies, but all allies, to have some damage mitigation for all magical attacks that are inbound. And additionally, he also uh, has his attack which increases damage from other light enemies regardless of who they're attacking. So this is really going to make dungeon grinding far easier. 
If you're on track to get Leonidas, I hope you get him, and I hope you enjoy him as much as I have. Additionally, I thank you guys for watching these videos. I really appreciate it. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe, and feel free to like and comment. I do try to reply to everybody that takes the time to do so. Thank you again for watching, and I will see you at the next video.